egg yolk proteins, a process usually restricted to females, but the hearings produced no new proposals. Yeah, and there were about by the way, um, six trace pharmaceuticals, six different kinds of drugs that were found in the Washington, D.C. area water in the, in the survey we did. Um, so they still have pharmaceuticals in their water. Um, it, I think it's fair to say that not much in terms of concrete legislation came out of those hearings. Um, people should know that the Senate Committee on the Environment, within hours of the release of our report, announced that it was going to be holding hearings on this whole issue, a much broader approach than the Congressional Committee took earlier. And um, they are talking about holding hearings on this issue in April. And it's written, at hospitals, the EPA flags about three dozen specific drugs as hazardous waste. They say many hospitals still dump some of these hazardous pharmaceuticals into their other garbage. Also, the list hasn't been updated for years and ignores scores of troublesome newer drugs, including toxic chemotherapy agents. The EPA says, essentially, that we can't keep up. Too many new drugs are introduced each year. We've got to base what we do on science. And we simply can't keep up with the number of new drugs that are being introduced on the market um, in hospitals, much less trying to regu regulate them in this way at home. So the EPA acknowledged that outright to us. You also write about the difference between what the U.S. and Europe is doing. After talking about Maine, which is preparing to accept unwanted pharmaceuticals on a grander scale, the federal and state governments have split the $300,000 cost to launch a four-county trial in coming months where pharmaceutical buyers will take home prepaid mailers to send drug leftovers to a way station, where most will be picked up for transport to incinerators. Drug pollution stirs more anxiety in Europe, Canada, and Australia. Australia. Why is that? And what is being done right now in Congress? It is true that um, Europeans have been on the cutting edge of this, in some cases more than American researchers even. Um, they picked up on it earlier, recognized it as a potential threat earlier. Some of the best early research was done in, in Germany, for example. Um, so. Um, they're a little more concerned about it, and they have national programs of a kind that we don't have to recapture some of these pharmaceuticals that are, are discarded. This is the issue we were talking about earlier with people having to throw away some of their, their medicines that have expired and they're, they're not using for some reason. So the French, for example, have uh, had a program for some years where when you get medicine, you also get a prepaid mailer to send it back to the pharmacy if you don't use it, and that's eventually sent for incineration if it goes back to the pharmacy. And there was a poll done uh, a couple years ago, and most French said they took part in that program. They participated in it. So it's not a strange idea to the Europeans. There's still limited regulation in other places, in Europe, in Canada, in Australia. So there's this greater awareness, this, there's this greater concern, but there's still limited regulation and limited evidence on how great a concern this should be. Also, bottled water not even tested for any of this. That's right. I, a lot of people think instinctively that, well, I drink bottled water. I don't have anything to worry about. As you say, the people in the bottled water industry acknowledge to us that they're not required to test for it. They don't test for these low amounts of, of pharmaceuticals. And by the way, I should say that we're talking about parts in billion or parts in trillion, very, very low amounts. Um, they don't test for them. And as I said before, there's research showing that these trace pharmaceuticals can, do, can end up in groundwater. So um, part of the bottled water on the market is actually repackaged tap water, <laughs> you have to remember. And then part comes from underground water sources. But since there's research that suggests that underground water sources can also carry these trace pharmaceuticals and their byproducts, and since testing isn't done, 
bottled water isn't necessarily devoid of these contaminants either, I'm afraid to say. Uh, Senator Lautenberg, Senator Boxer, Lautenberg of New Jersey, Boxer of California, yeah, yeah. Um, your investigation has prompted uh, calls for regulation and documentation of these drugs. Can you tell us what these senators are doing? That's right. Um, there's the, the Committee on the Environment that says it's going to hold hearings, as I said a moment ago, and then other congressmen have pushed the EPA to establish a task force on this, to establish a more aggressive program for testing. There's been pressure on the EPA in the last week or two since our series came out. There's been pressure on state and local governments to do more testing. Illinois, for example, said that it's going to begin a, a testing program now. There's pressure to not only test, but to tell people when tests are taken and when these pharmaceuticals are found. Because we found that the vast majority, the vast majority of water providers do not routinely tell the public when they find these contaminants. Jeff Dunn, I want to thank you very much for being with us. Associated Press National Writer, co-author of welcome. the five-month investigative series on pharmaceuticals in our drinking water. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We're broadcasting on over six